be with you again. Glad to be sharing the Word of God. Um, I want to share with you a little bit, and I don't have much time here, uh, on the subject of the importance of our thoughts, our thinking. You know, um, I, the majority of the people that I've ministered to over the years uh, really fail to see that what they think, and when they think negative, when they think dark thoughts, thoughts that cater to emotions that sometimes uh, are up and down, their thoughts go up and down with it, and and they are they fail to see that they're actually opening up to the devil, because the devil will definitely move in and inspire thoughts and feelings that will lead you off into something negative, something that will take you downward. If you think negative thoughts, you're going to go in a downward spiral. And that downward spiral, spiral is not going to lead you anywhere positive. It's going to lead you into the negative, deeper and deeper darkness. But the Lord wants us to move upward into the light, into the resurrection light of Christ. And as we begin to see, now I'm not talking about some wild arrogance. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about moving and seeing as a Christian what you are in Christ and beginning to meditate and think upon that and think upon the spiritual realities of God and your ability to communicate with him and grow in the reality of that fellowship with him through that communication. Now, it's not just through the word. It's through the spirit also. And as we do this, we open up our souls to a transformation process that we will cause us never to be the same again, that we can move into the fullness of the glory of Christ, which is the image of Christ, maturing into the image of Christ. And this is our goal uh, as a Christian, and it's God's goal for us through Christ to be transformed. It's by grace, but it's a reality, an experience. See, grace produces a reality. It's not something we uh, we deserve. Grace gives us the blessings that we don't deserve, the blessings that are purchased for us by Christ. But the blessing is meant to literally, by grace, but it's meant to literally transform us more and more into the image of Christ, more and more into the image of God, because God is Christ. And that's not a negative image. That's not an image that's going to take us down. You know, some say, well, you have to go down before you come up. No, what you have to do is lose the carnal control of your soul, the negative control of your soul, and not in arrogance, because that's negative too. It's self-centered. I'm talking about seeing yourself for what you are in Christ, seeing yourself for what you are because of grace, but not just that it's like God's looking at you through rose-colored glasses. No, you have become and are becoming and have the potential to become all that he says that he purchased for you in Christ. You have the potential to grow into the image of Christ, not through some natural ability of your own, not through some natural carnal uh, limited ability that you have to try and discipline yourself, but through the supernatural ability of the Holy Ghost, transforming you because of the work of Christ more and more into the image of Christ, more and more into the image of what God wants us to be. And I want to share with you very quickly, because I certainly don't have much time here, I want to share with you uh, out of the Word of God, Romans, Book of Romans, and I'm going to use the Holman's Christian Standard Bible here, and I only have time for a couple verses. Um, Romans 12, uh, verse 1. Therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies, that's your carnal control of your soul by your body, as a living sacrifice, holy, separated unto purity, separated unto godliness, because the only purity is godliness, and pleasing, which is pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. It's an act of spiritual worship, because as you crucify the flesh or Put to death the control of the flesh, the carnal control of the flesh over your soul, the limitations, the weaknesses of the flesh because of the fall. And the flesh isn't born again yet, your spirit is. But you take on the spiritual mindedness. You take on moving and growing into the fullness of the knowledge of God. All that by the power of the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost that's already breathed into you and begins to develop and grow, mature, and transform your soul. Verse 2. Uh, do not be conformed, molded to this age, the, the philosophies and ideas and psychologies of, these, of this day, but be in thought and form, but be transformed. That word is a metamorphosis. It's a literal transformation by the renewing of your mind. We renew our mind. 
with the Word of God. And as we renew our thinking and our, our emotions with the Word of God, and we have the ability to do it because we have the name of Jesus, and as we cast down every thought, imagination, and feeling contrary to the Word, and we take captive every thought, imagination, and feeling in line with the Word of God, all that Christ has done for us, all that He's given us the potential to be and do by the power of the Holy Ghost in response to His name, then we are transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost into the very image of the thing that he's purchased for us and reveals in his word. So that you may discern and you will discern, you will know, you will perceive what is the good and pleasing and perfect will of God. But what is the good and pleasing and perfect will of God? That you be transformed into the image of God. That's what redemption is. Redemption, uh, redemption means to purchase or buy back. Well, what was lost? Man being created in the image of God, with the very divine life of God in him. And when he lost that, death is separation, it's separation from the divine life. And that divine life produced godliness. It was separation from godliness, being in the image of God, and being perverted and corrupted more and more into ungodliness, which is darkness and death and negative. See, death takes you, weakens you, just like a sickness does. It weakens you more and more, more and more into... So a picture of unhealthy, being unhealthy is a picture of not being healthy. The negative is going the other way. Healthiness is, uh, health rather, is uh, the picture of, of godliness, if you would. It's the picture of being strong and vital in God and what you were created to be. In this case, we have too many people thinking that they're created more to be, when their idea of what they're created to be, they see the carnal. No, we're not created to be that. That's the fallen man. We're created to be in the image of Christ, and that's spiritual. And as you, you see, we're created in the image of God, remember? And God is spirit. Christ came in the flesh so that he could take our place. But now our flesh will be glorified once again, but right now it's not, but our spirit is. And we have the potential through the power of the Holy Ghost to become a spiritual man and grow more and more into the image of Christ, more and more into the image of God. And that is godliness. That is what godliness is. You know, godliness is godlikeness. You cannot grow into the image of godliness without growing into the image of God. And that's what man was created to be. Adam fell, sin perverted it, and he became ungodly. The ungodliness that's in you is a perversion of what God created the human race to be. And in Christ, through the redemption and restoration back to all that, that was lost but to sin, the original sin and all sin since, is a restoration back by the power of the Holy Ghost into the image of God. Now, it starts again with your thinking. It all starts with a thought. As you start to see what I'm saying, for instance, here in the Word of God, and you go and you search out the revelations that show you what Christ purchased for you, the restoration back to godliness by the power of the Holy Ghost, as you see that you're literally a child of God, a king in his kingdom with authority, and power responds to authority, as you begin to grow more and more, you're going to see that power respond as your authority increases by your maturing in Christ. And, you know, God can't uh, trust you with the fullness of the authority that you have the potential to live in until you mature some so that you can handle it, until you, until you mature some so that you can move in obedience to him and uh, become godly uh, through the power of the Holy Ghost, the transform, transforming power of the Holy Ghost more and more into the spiritual mindedness or your soul becomes more spiritual, moved by uh, functioning in the spirit. Uh, your new creation, the new man takes over your soul and you become a living soul in the sense that that divine life of God rules and functions and dominates your soul. And uh, as that happens, he can trust you with more and more authority. And that, that authority will move the power of God to bring about manifestations of the blessings of God in the earth around you, in your life and in the lives of others. And as your soul is matured more and more, that power will flow in response again to your authority to manifest healings and deliverance and blessings and prosperity for others because that's your inheritance. God can trust you with the inheritance as he can trust you with the authority. As your authority increases, then your inheritance is going to increase because the power will respond to bring it and create it in this physical. It's all God's power, but it's delegated and moved into you. He has delegated both power and authority to his church. And that authority and power come from the kingdom, the king of the kingdom, our father. Now, this again increases as we mature. 
And, you know, we have to learn to function in obedience to God. We have to learn to fill our heart with his word and as revealed by the Holy Ghost and move in the power of the Holy Ghost to see the manifestations of this blessing come to pass that we are to be witnesses, witnesses of God to the earth, witnesses of the work of Christ, the workmanship of Christ, which is the redemption back to, again, the image of godliness, the image of our Father. We're literally born of his seed. We're literally born of the breath of God and we have the very divine DNA within us we have the very divine because of the divine breath of God we have the potential to grow more and more into his image more and more into the image of what he wants us to be well I need to go here I don't have any more time than this uh, on these they're they're uh, on YouTube they're a uh, short uh, videos that I'm allowed to put on. So I need to go now. I didn't get to do much teaching. I had to preach a little bit here, uh, but I hope that it's a, a blessing to you. Uh, it's so important how we learn to think, how we learn to control our thoughts and discipline. And we need to not only bridle our tongue, we need to bridle our thinking. We need to bridle and discipline our emotions. Our emotions are not to lead us, we're to control them. And that through the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost responding to the name of Jesus in our inheritance in Christ. And we need to cast down in that name all things that are contrary in thought and action and emotions that are contrary to the Word of God. And to take captive and hold captive and renew our minds with the Word of God so that the transforming process of the Holy Ghost, that metamorphosis, takes place from divine glory to divine glory into the image of the Word of God. Jesus is the Word, and we're transformed more and more into what He's purchased for us by being transformed more and more into the grace that is shown in the Word of God, the inheritance that is ours, unmerited but a blessing of inheritance into godliness. Well, I thank you and I praise God for this opportunity to share with you. I hope that this is a blessing to you, though it's very brief, uh, and I know that God will honor it as you begin to step out into it, into the fullness of the blessing of the power of God. In Jesus' name, amen.